kind of does. All right. I'm pretty intimidated at this point. I yes, feel this. yes. <laughs> I am as well. And uh, as Mana was saying, he's trying to survive at this point. Mana is the red Protoss in the bottom right, right here that you see. And in the top left, we have Alpha Star. Seems like Mana is going to be very careful about expanding that's place there. So he can probably put a shield battery down and have that kind of defender's advantage if he gets attacked again by Alpha Star, because, you know, Alpha Star definitely has been attacking uh, pretty early and pretty often so far. Hitting goals rather defensive, mm -hmm. rather than committing with the shades forward and going to your enemy's base as quickly as possible. You can see that Officer there is kind of trying to preserve uh, its adapts. It, there's a little trend that I've seen uh, from the agents. I know that every agent that we've wow. seen so far. Oh, that was a very good recall by Alpha Star, actually. We haven't seen a move quite like that yet. We've seen recalls from the previous agents, but that was kind of a, a very clutch one where you're going to lose an adept, maybe two adepts in that situation. Well, uh, with this Oracle from Mana flying in right now and getting a decent amount of probes that get pulled very, very quickly, I guess that Alpha Star is going to be happy once again that it has these extra probes, so its economy won't be completely destroyed. And Mana, I feel like, is in a good spot with these Oracles flying around, trying to get some probes, getting the information, and making Immortals at home, which are going to do really, really well against this high Stalker count. But I must say, I'm loving the Stalker positioning there by Alpha Star. The way that these Stalkers were spread out in the natural, the yeah. second base yeah. of Alpha Star, that just made it very hard for these Oracles and to come in and get damage done. That's now that. Blink upgrade is on the way for Alpha Star. It seems still like a very, very close game. So far, wow. looking at the compositions that these two are making, I really feel like there is an advantage here for Mana. This is perhaps the most interesting game that we've seen so far, because mm. I agree with you that composition-wise, there is absolutely an advantage for Mana, but you can also say that the ball is in the corner of Alpha Star. Alpha Star needs to make plays happen, but yeah. if there is one unit in Protoss versus Protoss where you can say you can get value out of them, even yeah. though you've made a lot of them early on, it is in general the Stalker. Now, 29 Stalkers oh don't want to fight this straight up. There is a shield battery, there are immortals, yes. there are stasis traps that will freeze those units, but let's see if there is some potential here. Yeah, there's so many Stalkers out. 30 is a number beyond anything that we really ever see. Now, Mana is kind of zoning them out with that powerful Disruptor. Here Alpha Star comes, trying to target down wow. some of these important units and actually picks off the Disruptor. So that was pretty strong and some fantastic <laughs> yeah. Micro blinking back. Okay, this Micro is starting to get a little bit ridiculous. <laughs> no, I don't think a single Stalker went down up to this point. Okay, there we go. Okay, uh, losing a few of them here and starting to pick off some of the Immortals. Now, a Stasis Ward gets tripped, so that's definitely going to help Mana a little bit. Yeah, these Immortals are starting to do serious work. Yeah. That's kind of what we went over in a straight-up fight. Immortals are simply quite a bit stronger than Stalkers, but mm -hmm. Alpha Star was displaying some phenomenal micro there. Being able to keep these Stalkers alive. Oh my goodness, this Stalker count is out of control. How many yeah. Stalkers is that? Now, it is 32, so we have even more than Alpha Star started with, but six Immortals yeah. and Shield Batteries nope. and Stasis Wards should be able to hold on at this point. No amount of Micros should be able to save you here. I do love that Alpha Star is transitioning during all of this. Wow, I love actually. So there are a couple of tricks that we use in Protoss versus Protoss. Without getting too technical here, Immortals have a barrier that can absorb quite a bit of damage. Now what pro players like to do is target the Immortal with just one unit. You can see a barrier go off and then you use the rest of your army to gun this Immortal down. Alpha Star is using this trick over and yes. over and over well, again. That. And there is a cannon yeah. all the way in the back. Mana is actually targeting the robotics facility here. Yeah, it's not a bad move. Okay, so once again goes in. These Stalkers are getting softened up. You can see on those health bars, a lot of them have taken wow. quite a bit of damage. After these, uh, these Dark Templars actually got recalled there by Mana. We can see these Immortals are starting to do some very hmm. serious work here. Stalkers have micro potential, but the damage output of five or six of these Immortals from Mana, that's simply too high, and yeah. no amount of micro can save you in these kind of fights. And now that he has these Dark Templars at home, you know, making an Archon, it, it, Mana is playing an extremely intelligent game right now. It, like, it, I'm very impressed with the control of Alpha Star, the fact that Alpha Star has taken a third base and gotten the Observer out in time to not die to the Dark Templars, but 
Uh, Mana's looking pretty scary here as well. Can we take a look? Is there a charge on the side of Alpha Star? I don't think so. Yes, oh, there, there is. is. Okay. There is already. Now, this army of Mana is very powerful, and the Immortals will always take care of Stalkers. But if Alpha Star would be able to perhaps buy some more time for itself, there is a chance that, you know, 20 Zealots can show up, and then 20 Zealots can surround this army, because Alpha Star is a base ahead. Yeah, uh, it, now these trades though seem to be going extremely well for Mana, this but he, it, it, we keep seeing uh, Alpha Star do that trick that you're talking about, hit the, the barriers on the Immortals and then blink away. Not that much damage on these Stalkers. I feel like most pros would have lost all these Stalkers by now. Multiple groups of Stalkers being controlled here as well. Look at the Oracle. There are Stalkers everywhere. I think <laughs> at this point, Mana is also wondering, okay, what am I going up against? Because this is, I mean, not even the best Protoss players can often pull up movement no, like this. You're, you're really quite right about that. Oh, the War Prism. Oh, that was a great pickoff right wow. there. And getting the Disruptor as well. Oh my gosh. Alpha Star with the pure Stalker strategy. This is oh. insane control, though. Multiple armies being controlled. All oh, the Immortals went down, and now it's just a couple of Zealots, and obviously Stalkers are fat. Well, there are still a couple of Immortals on yeah. the north side, but it's incredibly difficult to do this in a game of Stalker yeah. Field, where you micro and units on the south side of your screen, but at the same time, you also have to do it on the north side. And you know what's really kind of shocking about this is we went over the APM, the actions per minute, yeah. and it's not really that high. It's it's a, an acceptable pro level of speed coming out of Alpha Star. It's phenomenal it's, unit control. This is not something we see very often. No. The stock is coming in from multiple angles as well. A forward blink at this point, Alpha Star. Yeah, this is pretty wow. insane stock wow. play then. <laughs> that, yeah. that is just unbelievable. Like it, having. Mana has made so many Immortals this game, I can't even count how high. And the fact that it has been defeated by literally pure Stalker, the, the unit that the Immortal most counters, it's so surprising. And GG is, is called by Mana there. Yeah, so <laughs> once the, the video roll in, I can kind of a bit of uh, unpack it for you guys, perhaps. So this is a very nice visualization also prepared by the team um, after the matches, which essentially shows quite a few things. Um, so here, starting on the top left, we see Alpha Star um, view. Um, the game, as, as it's kind of, it's focusing its attention on this area of the map. Uh, as Dave said, we don't have the notion of a camera, but it kind of focuses wherever you're seeing that screen on. And importantly and interestingly, Alpha Star observes or perceives the game only when it wants to act. So this arrow that appears and disappears, it means when it appears, it means now it's actually looking at what's going on. Um, then this kind of observation goes into uh, what we call neural network. Um, I must say these words here for, for kind of the machine learning people out there. Um, these three sort of spheres that are kind of changing in color is actually what we call an LSTM, but let's not talk about that <laughs> in the stream perhaps. Um, so this is kind of a bit of the brain of Alpha Star, and it's what kind of it's deciding what to do. So after that, the arrow goes into kind of an important area of the screen, which is what actions should I take, right? The first injecting the observations, thinking a little bit of the situation. And then we see kind of important points here. First is what should you do? What action should you do? There are many actions in StarCraft. So we see, for instance, what buildings does it want to do? Um, what units does it want to create? And that's kind of the, the little balls we see on here on the, at the bottom right. And also we see which locations it's considering issuing this action, right? So it's building a new unit, it's it's moving its 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 kind of set of units around, and we can see kind of what, what it thinks it should be moving next. And last but not least is the outcome prediction, right? So Alpha Star requires to kind of gouge itself whether it's ahead or not. Um, at this point in the game, clearly it thinks it's ahead. It's it's really confident it's gonna win. And if we analyze the, this game in terms of supply and how much units and, and economy, um, we would understand that you know Alpha Alpha Star here is actually ahead, although the game is not over. Um, so that outcome prediction is kind of also a testament of like what is the agent perceiving the game? Should it push forward? Should it retreat? Those decisions are so critical and so difficult to make as a pro. As you know, you know, going back and forth, should you engage or not, these are actually what makes StarCraft a very hard challenge for AI. 
because how are you going to hard code rules that encode whether you should go up the ramp or not, as you were saying, right? So um, the, the solution we adopt is to not hard code any rule at all. We let sort of this whole system that they've described learn by itself what is it going to be that the alpha star should be doing at all times. Um, so this is a bit of unpacking. Uh, we will obviously have this and more details uh, later on today, but um, I hope, I mean, this is a kind of a cool way to see Stargate. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you guys have not seen this before. <laughs> Just <laughs> momentarily. Uh, one thing we need to mention, as Tim Morton from Blizzard was talking about earlier, there is not an observer mode yet. So what we'll be watching is actually Mana's point of view. You're going to see what it's like for a pro gamer to actually play StarCraft II. Uh, and so that's, that's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun, a little bit more jumpy than what we were watching before, but this replay as well will be on the DeepMind website. What? Yeah. what Mana can pull off. Now, again, this is Mana's point of view. It's the same map that we have been on Catalyst. So you see Mana up here. He's going to be the green Protoss. And, uh, of course, we already know where... Uh, Alpha Star is. It's it's in the bottom right. This is very fun for us because so you know. Mana now has scouted. Uh, he's playing a very standard game at this point, and we see that this this agent of Alpha Star has decided to wall that top of that ramp. Uh, so you know it, we've seen that off and on, but mostly not happening. It's an interesting thing to note. Probably won't see adepts coming out right away from Mana because of that. It is so interesting to think that it has taught itself that, though, because it has been, you know, playing yeah. against itself, the reinforcement learning, and that eventually, you know, one alpha star made two adepts and killed a whole bunch of pros from yeah. the other alpha star. It was like, hey, I should actually start walling off. My gosh. <laughs> but enough <laughs> alpha stars in a room for 200 years, and yeah. you get some very <laughs> strong strategies. This is really fun. But the two-gate robo opening is, you know, in general, this is the most defensive way I think you can play Protoss with yeah, Protoss. Yeah. Even the Nexus for Mana is quite late as we are watching Mana's point of view. Mana is scouting at this point on the other side of the map and he spots that the Alpha Star A has a Stargate. Wow. B also has a faster expense. Yes, and, and Oracle being made specifically. So Mana is starting to defend against this right away. Wow, really good decision making here. Actually sacrifices the Oracle for a couple of centuries. So that's... Uh, I, I don't mind that at all from Alpha Star. I like what he did. Trees are maybe something else now. Alpha Star is actually attacking right into the front with these stalkers. At the same time, the second Oracle shows up in the main base as well. Imagine a world where Alpha Star would have had both Oracles alive at this point. Then yeah. the yeah. stalker aggression combined with two Oracles would have really paid off. But this is still nice. It's an even oh. game, but Alpha Star is definitely dominating the pace of this game. Right, wow. right now, this really looks like I'm watching a, a professional human gamer from the Alpha Star point of view. You know, watching the fact that Alpha Star is coming into the main, coming into the natural. You know, we kind of see it, there's that second Oracle you were talking about yeah. as well. So now two Oracles are showing up, and at this point, the shield battery that Mana has in his mineral lines. <laughs> okay, the, the micro on the Oracle was really good at this point. Yeah. The Oracles, uh, excuse me, the Shield Battery is out of energy at this point as well, which means it cannot heal up these workers anymore, and Alpha Star has picked up a tremendous amount of workers of mana. The, I, I'm getting chills right now. The, like, what we're seeing from Alpha Star, this feels so far like the most human-like game that we've seen. Just the Oracles coming in harassing, you know, maybe the, the Sentry trade wasn't something every pro will do, but overall, very, very good stuff. Now, Mana's fighting back, though. Yeah. Mana's defending everything, kind of. Uh, he's lost probes and whatnot, but doing a bit of counter damage and getting some scouting done as well. Yeah, and I, I think that Mana... Alpha Star is actually pretty far ahead in this game. Yeah, Alpha Star is just playing so smartly and comes back in with double Oracle once again, yeah. eliminating quite a few probes. But it, Mana did cancel that Stargate, like you mentioned. Like He's getting so much scouting intel that he does know what are the right choices for him. But mm. the fact that Mana is sitting here, like if you see someone making a bunch of immortals to, to you know, counter your stalkers, what do you do? You take a third Nexus. And that's exactly what Alpha Star has done here. And we all, I like the positioning of the Observer on the left side of Mana. We can see that Mana knows about these stalkers coming back as well. I think Mana was a little bit worried because mm. the stalker count was so high that perhaps Alpha Star was actually able to just close out the game on the other side of the map. Ah. So Mana is kind of pulling <laughs> Alpha Star back. And these Immortals are, I mean, this is a dangerous game that Mana is playing because if this War Prism goes down, yes. I think it's safe to say the game goes down for me. Yes, I, I think you're right. But if Mana can continually lure Alpha Star back, 
that's a way that Mana can actually gain an advantage. Another Oracle being produced, by the way. I mean, one Stalker being wiped in in range of these Immortals. Mana's absolutely striking back here. And it's... Mana's playing brilliantly. Yeah. Like, you see those Stalkers continually going back and forth. Alpha Star either doesn't know or doesn't care about the Observer watching his movements. So Mana is just going in and out. Every time Alpha Star leaves, Mana comes back in. Well, Mana has, you would normally say, a more powerful army, but I think the numbers are yes. still heavily in favor of Alpha Star. Because as annoying as that immortal, you know, kind of harassment that your immortal attacks were in the main base of Alpha Star, I don't think it did that much damage. So I really think that there is a chance that Alpha Star has an insane amount of units mm. somewhere. There are a lot of stalkers right there for Alpha Star. It, Mana's army counters it pretty darn well. Look at this, bringing over these other two immortals. This is like seven immortals here. This is interesting to see as well, because now once again, Mana's yeah. army is in the middle of the forces of Alpha Star. And this is where things get very interesting, especially with the new camera movement we went over before this game started. Yeah, previously we saw Alpha Star uh, be able to pick apart an army like this, but Mana's army is stronger than it was in that previous game. This is a ridiculously strong army. The probe's starting to go down heavily. Now, where is Alpha no, Star? Yeah. We would use the term outplayed normally. I think in the first six, seven minutes of yes. this game, Mana was getting outplayed mm -hmm. by Alpha Star. At this point, it seems like Mana has created an army that is too much to deal with, even though there's quite a few oracles, actually. That is a lot of oracles. You are right about that. If all of the anti-air units go away. The oracles actually can clean everything else up, so we should not be counting out Alpha Star yet. But Alpha Star, I don't believe, has really any mining bases. So this is a very uphill battle right now for it. Well, I think Mana has done it, and that's actually very impressive. Yes, uh, Alpha Star cannot GG. Alpha Star <laughs> does not decide that it has lost the game and then leave it. So Mana will have to go to the win condition, which is to destroy every building of Alpha Star. And as you see, there are a few left. Alpha Star has been trying to rebuild. But at this point, we know as professional commentators that Alpha Star has a 0% chance to win. What do you think are the odds of Alpha Star building a pylon in the right top side of the map? <laughs> <You know? laughs> Wouldn't that be something? Watch enough replays, you'll see some humans do that, that's for sure. <laughs>